you're welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching today's business. Now, I'm about to have a chat with um, our guest, Ike um, Ilichi Ogba, a professor of uh, marketing and organization behavior at the Ebony State University at Bakaliki, and uh, we will be dealing on the issue of education. Now, just yesterday, um, we got reports that um, ASU ruled out calling off its ongoing nationwide strike despite the olive branch from President Mohamed Buhari directing the payment of the withheld February and March salaries of its members. Education has been put on hold thanks to COVID-19. So we want to see how we can move forward in the educational system in Nigeria. And Professor Ike Lichewa will be um, doing justice to that. Hello, Professor. Good morning and welcome to today's business. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, um, I, I just said before introducing you about um, ASU. Um, deciding to continue with the ongoing nationwide strike despite the olive branch that has been handed to them by the president, uh, you know, to pay, to pay them, you know, during this COVID-19 pandemic. Now, this has put a lot of strain on the educational sector, from the primary to the secondary to the tertiary institutions. No um, learning is going on right now in any way. Now, let us, let, let's start by accessing, assessing the educational um, system in Nigeria. First of all, then we take the discussion up from there. What, what's your assess, as, um, assess? How would you assess the educational system in Nigeria? Well, um, thank you for having me. But if, if you want me to give you a straightforward answer, the education system in Nigeria is, um, is, is a sham, it's complete um, 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 to failure, if I should use that word, if you want me to be like straight to the point. Although we know that we've made some achievements in some certain areas, but if you're to do a holistic review with one word, it's simply failure. That is a straight to the point answer, and um, that was pretty below the belt there. Now, um, COVID-19 has come, and we are, we are seeing its impact here. But we realize that um, in, um, in developed countries, schools still hold, but it is online. So students are not just sitting at home without doing anything. They are learning online. Um, is, 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 would, you, would, would you please tell us if this is the same situation in Nigeria, or it is otherwise? Of course, it's not. Um, um, except if we're living in la la world or in dream world where you think that um, education is going on online in which university in which sector of the higher institution do you have um, schools functioning via online learning yes in secondary level you may find that in few areas but our university level is not functional at the moment even even at some of the best private universities, um, they may come out and tell you, oh, we have online facilities that are functional. We have portal systems that allow students to learn, and we have uh, podcasting and all of that. See, I served as director of academic planning at the Point State University for um, uh, five years, and before then was head of PhD program at the Newcastle Business School, Northumbria University back in England. And I can actually do a proper comparison of what is found in UK and what is found here. And the, the, the thing is, seriously, we don't have enabling environment and infrastructure to support online learning, except if you call online learning, setting up a WhatsApp uh, platform, and then um, people come there to chat. That is not an e-learning system. Um, most universities that have a portal, um, um, uh, it's just basic functions. All students can do is basically pay school fees through uh, a portal system. Some of them are not even effective enough to um, for you to make payment and are not necessarily secured as it should be. And the other thing you may find is probably they will send emails, which is hooked via Google, and, and that's it. So you don't have a system, a portal system that is strong enough that will allow students to log online and have a universal learning platform where you can have access to everything. And sometimes you even have a, 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 a portal system that don't even support sufficient e-learning materials like EBSCO hosts, 
um, 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 uh, uh, Elstein here and the rest of them, where, them, where you have online journals and online um, um, articles and monograms and manuscripts to read from. Uh, th that's, these are basics, but we don't have them. Tell me the university I have it, and I'll tell you all they do is to set up these things just a few days or a few weeks before accreditation. And once that is done, it's back to status quo. So do we have those facilities? I don't think so. If someone say we do, I want to know which of the university and, uh, and, and, and how they actually does it. I don't want to go far. Let me leave it there for now, please. I mean, what, what, what really could be the problem here? You, you mentioned the fact that we have issues with infrastructure here. Is it that um, the, the people in charge of the education system in Nigeria, they do not really believe in, um, in, in quality and wholesome education? I mean, compared to other, other countries that yeah. if people even, even in Nigeria yeah. are moving on to. I mean, what could be the roots of the problem here because we need to get the problem find out the problem then get yeah. the solution so yeah. from your research could you tell us what 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 could be the roots of the problem here okay see the, the problem is the problem is whenever you ask people what's the root problem we go back to the same statement leadership we don't have lead, national leadership doesn't pay attention to education and then and then you cascade it down to university leadership, or we don't have the right leaders. And I'm going to be very straightforward, extremely brutal, uh, because we are in a critical time in Nigerian history that if we don't tell ourselves the truth, at the age we are, imagine a man in the region of 50 to 70 years, and he still don't want to tell himself the truth, then we are doomed. First, yes, we have leadership problem, of course, and it's obtainable everywhere. Um, we also have leadership, leadership at different levels, both at university level. But one of the things that I found with my, my coming back to Nigeria and being here in the university system um, is that we have multi-phased problems. And each of these problems impact on the ability of the university or the educational system to expand or grow or consolidate. And I'm going to start from, let's say, charity begins at home. First, the educational system we have at the moment is simply a white man, I'm sorry to use that word, I should say a European man model. When you pick up something from another alien world or a foreign world and impose it on your own system, it's never going to work. So if I, as a father, identify how another man runs his family and I choose to adopt his method, how is it going to work? It's obviously not going to work at all. So the first thing we need to do is to look inward and ask ourselves, why must we always depend on whatever the Western um, uh, pushes to us? Our medical structure is according to Western system. Our transport system, Western. Our clothing these days, Western. Our media system, Western. So what then is African? What then is Nigerian? What then is Aosa, Igbo, Yoruba? Are you telling me that these tribes never had education before we were colonized? Don't so, we? So, so why would we, if we look at China, we look at, look at some Asian countries, all they've done is take their own and internalize it to fit into what they have to offer. Now, here we are. The, 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 the Christian everything is good along the line of what we put from our colonial bosses. So first of all, we need to come home and deal with our internal problem in learning. I recall when I was a child, in, we never had um, this ad advanced technology. But the people I grew up with, my own friends, were all brilliant. They learn through their environment and through the society and through their community. We know a lot of herbs, a lot of roots, a lot of medicinal, um, um, uh, some herbs that you take, take, take and cure some diseases. And also we learn through what you call neuro environmental system. So your, your mind or your brain is advanced by what you see around you. Our children are locked into a wall 
called classroom, and then a teacher stands there and talk gibberish, and they take notes. You dictate, they take notes, they basically regurgitate what you ask them at the end of the day. That is not education. That is not learning. So, yes, we don't have infrastructure, and that's the truth. I recall when I came back in 2012, my do daughter, um, visited, and she, she came along and I took her through a university in the eastern part of Nigeria, not my university. But when he saw the one of the buildings, it was like, is that stable? Is that where you keep horses? I said, no, these are classrooms. And, and she started crying. She was like, Dad, why did you come back to Nigeria? And that's because we have infrastructural problem. And that's the truth. How can you set up e-learning system? How can you start teaching students online when the materials to do online teaching or lectures are not there? It's learning simply um, um, as a teacher stand in front of the classroom and dictate or speak. No. Learning has to go with exposure and experience. If I want to take my students to a studio, a media studio like yours, Silverbird, do I need to take them to Lagos? Can't mm -hmm. we have such in every university a model of what a studio is supposed to be? But we don't have that. So we have a serious problem that has to do with us abandoning our culture and our way of life to wholesomely pull another man's way of life. And we've immersed ourselves in it so deep that for years we now have this psychological belief that Oyibo man's way is better than our way. So that's the first failure and that's the first problem. Um, and then we don't have. Me yes, sorry. sorry it's okay. Um, this is why I have to ask you briefly to just give us probably one or two um, um, solutions to this, to this issue. Okay, 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 fine. The first solution is this. Um, I, I, believe, I would have said at national level, but it's important. The first solution is let every university, let every secondary school, school authority, let every state authority and university and school heads return back to the um, uh, drawing board and review our learning curriculum to imbibe our own culture and our own approach to doing things, perfect way of doing things. Now, for instance, if you're teaching a child um, concept, for instance, you're teaching them market simulation and you're using New York or things that happen in other parts of the world, how would they connect with They've never lived the four walls of Nigeria. So we need to revisit our curriculum, restructure it, and bring back our own values and our own thinking systems, our history and our approach to learning. The way Africans learn is different from the way Yibo man or white man or Europeans learn. That's the first thing. When we do that, then we now move into the area of funding. The university system lacks funding extensively. But also the other question is the funding we have now, how is it well maximized? How is it properly monitored and controlled? Who controls, who monitors the money given to the university leadership by the governors or by the, the, the federal government? It's if a state government or a federal government releases fund to a university, for instance, how do we check to be sure that the money given are utilized to the letter. These are important things. So I believe seriously, if we can deal with our curriculum, restructure it, and begin to change our mind by believing in ourselves and in our own education system, and tailor make our curriculum to fit into applied world of reality. So if I'm teaching a student marketing, he should learn how to market, not to speak the grammar. If I'm teaching a student medicine, he should almost like practically know how to, if it's surgery, to perform surgery. If whatever it is, we must bring back applied practical learning system in our curriculum. And then the second thing is we need to have a structured way of 
monitoring, controlling, and reviewing our funding system. Because when you give money to people without having a system that checkmates appropriately how the money is used to the letter, then it becomes a problem. A good example, you mentioned ASU. ASU is simply a pressure group that demands for the welfare of, the, of its people. But ASU don't have the time and the resources to go sit and monitor how a vice chancellor and his leadership or his team utilizes or uses the money. So before, I don't want to kind of list so many points. Let's deal with these two major things, curriculum restructuring to integrate the way we do things here. That is our own traditional way. And we still borrow things from the West. We're not saying we should dump them. We should check, take their own success and leave their own failure and take our own success and leave our own failure. And then we'll have a functional curriculum that is applicable, applied. Then we move into control system that checkmates funding that comes in, how it is utilized. Right, thank you so much. What a, what a very good place to learn. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be speaking to Professor Ike Ilichio, Professor of Marketing and Behavioral um, Organizational Behavior at um, Ebony State University. And he has been throwing so much light on how we can move the educational system forward. Thank you very much for insight analysis um, into this issue. We do hope that those responsible for making this possible work to making it possible because we want to be proud of our educational system in Nigeria. Thank you so much, Professor. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. All right. Today's business continues after this short break. Please stay with us.